Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Also apply a watermark to your slideshows in Lightroom Classic CC. This is often used to display copyright information in pictures on slides. Like identity plates, watermarking information can appear on content you create within the slideshow, print, and web modules. To apply a watermark to a slideshow, check the watermarking checkbox that appears within the Overlays panel. Then click the adjacent drop-down to the right. If you have created and saved a watermark before, then you can choose the name of the saved watermark to use from the drop-down menu of choices. If not, you can create a new watermark by selecting the Edit Watermarks command from the drop-down menu to open the Watermark Editor dialog box. The preview within the dialog box shows the default copyright watermark. You can click the left pointing and right pointing arrows to the upper right corner of the preview to see how it appears on the images within your slideshow. To accept the default text copyright watermark, simply click the Save button at the bottom of the dialog box. To customize and save a new watermark preset instead, use the options in the dialog box to customize it first. First select whether to create a text watermark or a graphic watermark from an existing picture by selecting either the text or graphic option button from the watermark style choice at the top right corner of the dialog box. If you select the graphic option button, then use the open dialog box that appears to find and select the graphic to use. Then click the Choose button in the open dialog box to add the graphic and return to the Watermark Editor dialog box. If you select the Text Watermark option button, then click into the large white text field in the lower left corner of the Watermark Editor dialog box and type the text you want the text watermark to show. To add or change a graphic watermark, you can click the Choose button in the Image Options section of the Watermark Editor dialog box to launch the Open dialog box, which lets you find and select the graphic to use. Then click the Choose button in the Open dialog box to add or replace the graphic and return to the Watermark Editor dialog box. For text watermarks only, the Text Options section of the Watermark Editor dialog box lets you change the appearance of all the text in the watermark. Unlike identity plates, you cannot format only selected parts of a text watermark. In the text options area, you can use the font and style drop-down menus to select the font and font style to apply. You can select how the text aligns within its text field in the slide by choosing either the left, center, or right option button for the align setting. However, since the field and text within it resize in tandem, this setting tends to produce very little visible change. To change the text color, click the Color Color Chip, slide the slider at the right side of the color pop-up menu that appears upward to show the colors in the palette to its left, and then click a color in the palette to select it. Then click the X in the upper left corner of the color pop-up menu to close it. To apply a shadow to the text watermark, check the Shadow checkbox in the following section within the Text Options section. Then use the Opacity, Offset, Radius, and Angle sliders below the checkbox to adjust the shadow's opacity, the degree to which it is offset from the text, the amount of blur applied to it, and the angle from which the shadow extends from the front of the text. For both text and graphic watermarks, the options in the Watermark Effects section of the Watermark Editor dialog box let you change its appearance on screen. You can use the Opacity slider to set the opacity level of the watermark. The Size setting lets you choose the watermark size on screen. To set the size proportionally, select the Proportional Option button and then use the adjacent slider to set its size. Alternatively, you can hover your mouse pointer over a border of the watermark that corresponds to a resizable direction on screen in the preview area to the left until you see your mouse pointer turn into a double pointed arrow. When it does this, click and drag in the directions shown by the arrows to increase or decrease its size. Note that this also changes the proportional slider as well. Alternatively, to entirely fit the watermark on screen, select the Fit Option button for the size setting, or select the Fill option to try and fill the screen with the watermark. 
In the inset section, you can adjust the horizontal and vertical placement of the watermark in relation to the image. You can click and drag the horizontal and vertical sliders to adjust the margins for the watermark. The anchor setting lets you select an option button that corresponds to the side, center, or corner to which you want to anchor the watermark in relation to the margin boundaries set by the inset guides. You can click the two rotate buttons to rotate the watermark left and right in 45 degree increments each time you click them. To save your watermark as a new preset when you are happy with its appearance, either click the Save button at the bottom of the Watermark Editor dialog box, or click the drop down in the dialog box's upper left corner, and then select the Save Current Settings as New Preset command. Either way, the New Preset dialog box then appears on screen. Type a name for the watermark into the Preset Name field, and then click the Create button. If you opened the new preset dialog box by clicking the Save button, then you will close both dialog boxes and add the watermark. If you open the new preset dialog box by using the drop down, then you will return to the watermark editor dialog box, where you can now click the Done button in its lower right corner to close it and apply the watermark. You'll also see the new watermark appear within the Watermarking drop down menu for future use. You can also use the Watermark Editor dialog box to edit, rename, and delete custom watermark presets and also restore the default watermarks. To do this, open the Watermark Editor dialog box by clicking the Watermarking drop-down in the Overlays panel and then selecting the Edit Watermarks command. To edit an existing watermark, select its name from the drop-down in the upper left corner of the dialog box, make your changes, Click the same drop down in the upper left corner of the dialog box again, and then select the Update Preset Preset Name command from the drop down menu. To rename an existing watermark, select its name from the drop down in the upper left corner of the dialog box. Then click the same drop down menu again and select the Rename Preset Preset Name command to open the Rename Preset dialog box where you can type a new name into the Preset Name field and then click the Rename button to finish. To delete an existing watermark, select its name from the drop-down in the upper left corner of the dialog box. Then click the same drop-down menu again and select the Delete Preset Preset Name command to open the Confirm dialog box, where you can then click the Delete button to finish. To reset your default presets, select the Restore Default Presets command from the drop-down menu in the upper left corner of the Watermark Editor dialog box. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.